Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts which they earn by watching. We begin with the Monument Launcher which is supposed to send a mission to Saturn. I could have sworn that we had already launched this mission, the Saturn Amphibious Assault Ship. It's got a lot of landers on it. Uh, we definitely built it in our previous stream. Unfortunately it all explodes on the Monument Launch Pad. Again, the Monument Launcher has to be placed very particularly on the launch pad in order to survive, and this time it did not. It's quite a spectacular explosion in this case. Uh, yeah, lots of, lots of stuff going on. In fact, this uh, particular video will include many spectacular explosions. This might set a record, in fact, so we will see. You can see the Monuments Pier, that's a special launch platform, offshore launch platform for it. And that's because it's a very big rocket which has blown apart in many many different pieces including that engine there. Okay well I decide the best thing to do is just to launch it off the normal pad. That way it doesn't have to be positioned very specifically. It's still going to have a lot of lag though, as it is a humongous rocket. You can see down there more than 50,000 tons and uh, 105 plumes, as a matter of fact. And it's slowly building up to its full thrust there. You have to be very careful not to release the clamps before it's got to a thrust to weight ratio of 1. And it should be at there now. There we go. Alright, off we go. A very laborious launch. But I've had worse in Kerbal Space Program, to be honest. And this, of course, saves us from many, many launches, which we would have to do in order to put the mission that we have up there together. Could be possible to do that, but this is simpler. Alright, there goes the core stage. And here we have the second stage. Again, for those not familiar with the Monument Launcher, it was designed to be able to send a fully fueled Saturn V to orbit. That's 3,000 tons. You can see us making orbit. And we separate off a stage that is 1,400 tons. And we are carrying just about 3,000 tons. There was still some fuel left. We probably have a capacity more than 3,000 tons to be honest. But in any case we are on our way to Saturn with this huge vehicle sporting five Timberwind 250 engines. They have 2,500 kilonewtons apiece and we completely use that nuclear stage and we are on to the stage attached to the ship itself and that is an Attila thruster. Basically again uh, it's got the ISP of an ion engine, but more thrust, so we don't have to worry about the painful ion engine burns that we would always otherwise have to do, but an ion engine burn could have been used in lieu of this particular burn with the Attila thruster. The Attila thruster does have the downside of having a lot more dry mass than an, the equivalent ion engine system would, uh, as long as you were willing to deal with much less thrust. So it is uh, doing its thing and we have completed the transfer with plenty of delta V to spare. Hopefully the liquid methane which the Attila thruster runs on instead of xenon gas uh, is going to stick with us on this very 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 long trip. We will have to see. It seems like boil off depends on the thermal systems in the game and for those familiar with the ISRU overheating issue uh, the thermal systems sometimes surprise us with a lot of sudden heating. So anyway, that's the possibly the problem with the boil off as well, I'm not sure. But here we are with Arthur and Katak trying to get to their Saturn ship, which had the inflatable rotating habitat. And so we are just doing some burns to rendezvous. And then we separate off the smaller ion engine vehicle from the larger Attila return vessel. Unfortunately, I forgot to put food, water, and oxygen in this ion engine vehicle, which is the original one that they arrived at Mercury with. And having forgotten that and not noticed, unfortunately, Katak dies. But, but, don't worry. We, we'll have a way of 
solving that. Yes, there there it goes. It's just in sync with the music, by the way. That's just the in-stream music, and that's randomly played by VLC Media Player. It so happened to work. But uh, you'll notice I had a save called Arthur May Die. <laughs> it turns out Katak died, but uh, yeah, I had saved it right before undocking, or right after undocking there. So now we have to redock and grab the food, water, and oxygen. That's not as easy as it may sound because these are two big vessels with really bad RCS thruster configurations because I didn't want extra mass and they have the small docking port, the propellant only docking port so it took me a while and but we got the food, water and oxygen and now we can go over to the Saturn transfer vessel Saturn habitat ship and here we are docking with that actually I take it back, it's docking with us. It was easier to use the RCS on the huge ship to dock with the tiny ion engine vessel rather than the other way around. And there we go. Okay, so that's all connected up. Now we have to inflate the hab and Arthur is an engineer. So uh, it didn't give me an option to inflate the hab with Arthur being an engineer. We have the material kits and everything, so I thought maybe that we needed to move Arthur into that part for him to inflate it. That turned out to be a bad idea and Arthur died. <laughs> Arthur disappeared actually. Uh, you can't actually put a Kerbal into that part until it's inflated. So yeah, so they both died at some point in this, but we will be able to resurrect Arthur and yeah. That's just a peculiar glitch. I don't know why it didn't let me inflate it uh, with Arthur present, but anyway. It was too much to deal with, so I just edited the save. And I just edited the save, after restoring Arthur of course, I edited the save to indicate that it should be inflated already, that's all. And we also separated off the container that contained the material kits that were supposed to be used to inflate it. And I made sure that I had the right number of material kits, mind you. So that was not the issue. So here we are transferring over to Saturn. And that means that Arthur and Katak, we will not see them much in the near future. It's a mar magnificent vessel though. Marvelous and magnificent vessel. Really went all out on this business. And here we are plotting a correction burn, and it turned out that the correction burn was best done in Earth SOI, as far as I could tell. So we're just trying to get a good approach to Saturn, and also I think Arthur wanted to go to Titan, so that was the deal. And so we'll see if we can get Arthur over there. Having dealt with our Saturn missions, we now had to deal with mid-course adjustments for a variety of Mars missions previously launched. And first we had the supply vessel, and so that's a whole bundle of food, water, and oxygen with another Attila thruster. And so we are doing the mid-course adjustment here. We launched the Mars missions at a window that required an inclination correction. And that is what that looks like. So that's on its way. Uh, this is the vessel with Aronim and Karovka. This was NTP-2 and it had bad boil-off issues. You could see the overheated tank and this just has no Delta V right now so that's gonna be a problem. I looked at how much fuel it had prior to us turning back to it and I gave it back. It's, it's, it has been a lot of save file editing unfortunately. So, but these were supposed to be zero boil-off tanks. Not the one on the S2 stage there. That's not that was not meant to be a zero boil off tank, but that had the least boil off. <laughs> the other tanks, which are supposed to be zero boil off tanks, did not have uh, zero boil off as it turns out. So it's difficult. We had radiators and everything, and they're very heavy tanks too, so I don't know what else to do. This is a completely different supply mission. It's got a little orange there and also headed to Mars. And so I extend the orange's extendable engines. Really, it's supposed to be meant as a sky crane, so this is an unusual use of the orange, but if it works, it works. 
and so far it's working. In fact, it's methane and oxygen didn't boil off, right? Uh, so that's nice. Here we have the mission with Make 1B and Nazmiria going over to Mars. And this has beryllium fluoride, lithium fluoride, liquid fluorine, pentaborane, liquid ammonia engines, the Radernik Special, uh, burning at 423 seconds of ISP. And we're only using two because there are limited ignitions with those. That is a tight accommodation for Make 1B and Nesmeria, that's not a whole lot of room, that Link spacecraft for them. But they were last minute transfers, so it's first come first serve for the cushy accommodations, I guess, in each window. Here is another supply vessel, but this is going to Jupiter. And we need to see how much the Jupiter capture is going to cost. And it's not much, but this is an ion engine ship, so it better not be much because we simply don't have enough time to do it otherwise. This is a station for Jupiter, and I mean, of course, the station for Jupiter, we don't really want to leave it around Jupiter, we want to put it around the moon. So, we'll, but we'll think about that once we get there. So this is going to capture into Jupiter orbit. We haven't had any Jupiter tourists so far, even up to this point as I'm speaking. So people just don't like Jupiter. Maybe it's the radiation. Anyway, next up, I decided to try and make an Orion NTP thing, a nuclear thermal Orion thing. And I think I made a video regarding Orion having a nuclear service module. There's probably a video around somewhere where I test that idea out, but this is me putting it together and putting on SLS Block 1B. So just a regular Block 1B, nothing special. And this happens. Yeah, this is not good. Remember how I told you there were gonna be more explosions? Yep, here we go. And there goes the Orion pod. And I tried to stage to the... We had the abort system and everything, but I didn't have the abort configured because I sort of wasn't expecting the glitch. Nobody expect, expects the glitch. That's why you should have your abort configured. Anyway, they survived because Cape Canaveral is mostly water in this case. But yeah, that was a problem. And you might have seen some of this because of what happens eventually. I made a video about the sequence of events because of what will occur. I just tested whether the payload was at fault and the payload was not at fault. It was perfectly stable on the launch pad. So it was something with the SLS. I tried to modify how things were attached. That did not work. Yeah. I presume this is why SLS is delayed. They want to make sure this doesn't happen, really. Re uh, honestly, what's happened here is I've left the game running too long, and we've been switching between many, many vessels, and the game hates that. And so now it's got math issues all over the place, and actually they don't survive this time. They hit the water a little bit too hard there. So I had to revert flight. And I tried to use procedural parts uh, in order to make the inner stage instead of using the inner stages that originally came with this SLS mod. That didn't work. Yeah, that, that didn't work. Off it goes again. They're really spectacular explosions. Sometimes the explosions are a little bit underwhelming, but these are... Look at that 177 Gs on the G-forces endured. I'm surprised that the Kerbals get to survive with that, but... Anyway, I decided to add more procedural parts, trying to separate off the, the tank portion from the procedural fairing. And for a sec, that looks like that's better, but no, it does its little dance there. So... Well, yeah, well, they technically survived that time. So I decided to stop putting Kerbals on this and put a dummy pod on top this time. Again, uh, this was cover. You may have seen some of this before. Here we go. Here we go with the Saturn V instead of the SLS, seeing if that will have the same problem. And so the previous video was about the floating Saturn V. Uh, sorry for the spoiler, but here we go. Yep, 
Yep, there it goes. Yeah. That, that's a launch anomaly and a half. And even though I did a specific video on this before, and here I am checking if there's somehow some cheat involved. No, there wasn't. Um, having made the video before, I still think it's worth making the video again, especially in context. This is it in context. Yeah, we were trying to do something, but the game was not happy with me anymore. But I was not willing to let it go. It had done something interesting. First of all, we had lost all but one of our engines, so I decided to fire up the one remaining engine. And that was alright, uh, without the launch clamps being released. You can see it's actually sort of slowly increasing its velocity like this. But eventually I decide I have to see what happens when the launch clamps do release, and that is just regular physics, as a matter of fact. It seems like the launch clamps are at fault here, if you will. And without them there, everything proceeds like you might expect. I don't know why I've even bothered staging. I mean, the J2s don't have enough thrust weight ratio at this altitude to do anything about it, and it was just a test anyway. We've got the dummy capsule on top. And splash down into the green. Well, it is a swamp, right? I try it again. This time it just disintegrates. This time it just does pulls an SLS on us. So it's sort of random. Next time... Next time we get the pure floating Saturn V. No engines lost. It just goes straight up. Nothing else, no horizontal component. No, well, not much horizontal component. It's just straight up. I decided to fire the engines. And, of course, release the clamps. I think I was pointing out the vertical speed and the horizontal speed there. Practically no horizontal speed. And we are going up pretty much normally now. So it's only when we're on the launch clamps that we have the curiosity occur. After that, it's pretty much... we could go to orbit easily. Knowing that, I decide to see what happens when I shut down the engines, whether it'll go back to floating, right? And it does not. So it ultimately heads back down to the surface and directly on the launch pad because we had practically no horizontal component at all and in the end well we get an example of Kerbal buoyancy as that little part rolls right there yep I try it again because why not I mean, they say it's insanity to try things over and over and over again expecting different results, but we're actually getting different results. So, uh, in this case, it's not insane. So, yep, I, I didn't change anything. I just brought it straight out. And this time, it's doing something different. It, it was slowly moving to one side. And because there's a slope there, it's about to tip over. Yep, it just tips over. And the top explodes, but the, most of the rocket is still there. And there you have it. That's how the stream ended. I decided that I would need to restart, obviously, but I had basically had enough at this point. Uh, this uh, video represented peak glitchiness, issues, needing to edit save files, all that business in terms of solar system tourism. And hopefully we will not have to deal with any of this in the future. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.